Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our ukulele build. Well, if you tuned into last week's show, you saw what a mess it was, and uh, there was a few lessons learned there, and I'm okay with that. Uh, just kind of shows that this particular show doesn't live in that fantasy woodworking world where every cut is perfect and every project is problem free. But we're going to carry on with part two of our ukulele build, but we're going to sidestep from actually building the ukulele and get into building, um, I guess, another tool for it. And what it's going to end up being is an accessory for my lathe that will be a thickness sander. Um, that mahogany really didn't like my thickness planer, um, or maybe my thickness planer didn't like the mahogany, but once it got down to that thin stock, the planer destroyed it, as you probably saw in last week's show. Um, but today, we're going to start building a thickness sander um, to take care of this mahogany and get it down to the 5 sixty-fourths of an inch thick that we, we, that we require. And we're going to start off with a chunk of maple um, that's left over from the workbench build. So we're going to take this over, we're going to flatten it on the jointer, and then I'm going to run it through the thickness planer, leaving this 8 quarter stock as thick as I possibly can while still having two uh, perfectly flat surfaces to start working with. Well, we jointed them and uh, ran them through the thickness planer. We didn't exactly get our two inches thick. Um, we did get one and seven eighths. And I'm okay with that. This isn't an exact science. And uh, we're kind of in an experimental stage here anyway. So now with these two pieces cut, these blocks are six and a half by six and a half. Uh, now we're going to draw a line from corner to corner on each block and find our center point. Well, I ended up going to the woodworking supply and ended up picking up a faceplate for my lathe. Um, this one here will become a permanent fixture to this drum sander and uh, I, I think I paid $14.99 for it. So at this point in time we're going to pick one of our blanks and we're going to go ahead and mount this um, faceplate onto our block. It's not an exact science. We just want to ballpark it so that it's pretty much center. So now we'll go ahead and screw this down. Well here we have our two blocks. They're cut to the six and a half by six and a half inches and we need to laminate the two of them together. Uh, this one over here has our faceplate this one does not and I've used that schnazzy threaded rod glue spreader to put a nice even coat on uh, this particular piece and what we need to do later on is separate these two pieces once we've done turning them. So for that we're going to use just a piece of brown craft paper and I mean this is the stuff that they make paper bags out of uh, shipping companies love to use it for filler, um, but what this paper will do is make it much easier to split these apart once we turn them. It kind of gives a barrier in the glue that we can break instead of it breaking the wood. So now we're going to go ahead spread a little bit of uh, glue onto this one and flip it over on top of this block, and then we're going to let this all dry up.
Well, at this point in time, we're going to throw a couple clamps onto this and we're going to let this dry overnight just to make sure we have really good adhesion. So um, I guess that's it for uh, this part of this show. But don't worry, we'll be back in just a minute and we'll carry on with this particular part of the build. So while we're waiting for this to dry, um, I just want to say a little word about that glue spreader. Uh, a couple weeks ago that project was aired on the show and uh, like I said that time it was more of a gluing tip than what it was an actual woodworking project. But I did say at the time that if you let the glue dry on there you can just use a wire brush and clean it off and that is true, you can. But I have found that to be a um, little bit of a pain. So a little bit of a modification to that glue spreader would be before you epoxy your handles on, spin on a um, half inch nut. And that way, after the glue dries, you can just put a wrench on that nut, spin it all the way down the rod, and that nut will clean the rod for you. Well, we're back and it's the next day and we've unclamped this, uh, don't even know what to call it, but it's dry. That's all I care. And I don't think I've quite explained yet what's going to be happening here. And what's going to happen with this is our drum sander that we're making, or our thickness sander, is going to be made of a steel conduit, um, or a pipe, if you will. And with these blocks of wood, we need to turn plugs for the end of the pipe um, so that it can sit in the lathe and be powered by the lathe. So what we're going to do at this point in time is we're going to head over to the lathe and we're just going to put this onto the headstock. Well, here we are at the lathe and as I said earlier, <clears throat> this faceplate is going to be a permanent fixture of this sander. So for now, we're just going to mount this onto the headstock and what's going to happen when we turn this is this piece of the board here, this will be obviously the left uh, plug for the drum. And this will be the right plug for the drum. But we can't just run the drum free air like this. It'll never support itself. So we need to, when the drum is hooked up in the lathe, we need to have a live center on this side to support the right side of the drum. However, if we put it just into the wood with use of this particular uh, sanding drum, that center is going to wear and eventually it'll start to turn um, untrue on its axis and it'll make it unusable. So what we would really like to have is a steel center here. And for that, I'm going to embed a nut into the middle of this that the live center can rest in and uh, turn without wearing on the wood. So for that, what we're going to need to do is hook up a uh, Forstner bit and a drill chuck into our tailstock. So we've taken our live center and I've found a nut that will ride just nicely uh, in this live center without bottoming out and I've taken a measurement of what size hole I will need in order to embed it into this other end of the drum and it turns out it's a half inch hole. Um, now what I need to do is turn the lathe on, slow speed here and what we're going to do is drill this half inch hole just deep enough to be able to glue this nut in flush with the surface of our wood. And with that now the hole is drilled to the proper depth. So we're going to remove this chuck and we're going to place our live center um, into the tailstock and from this point in time now we want to mix up some five minute epoxy 
And uh, because of the working time, I'll also tell you, you're going to need some plastic wrap. Just a little sheet of like that, uh, I don't want to mention the brand, but you know that plastic food wrap that uh, everybody seems to love so much. Well, we have some five minute epoxy uh, mixed up. Just like I said, the live center is in the tail stock. I put a bit of wax paper down on the bed of the lathe just in case some of this epoxy should uh, drip down. And I just got it all over my finger, but <clears throat> oh well. So we're going to apply some epoxy into the hole and then we're going to set the nut in there. And uh, what we're trying to do here is establish this nut into the center of our um, board. And how we're going to do that is we're going to place the saran wrap. See, I just mentioned the name. Oops. We're going to take the plastic wrap and put it over this nut as we put it into the hole. And then we're going to bring our live center up into the up to the uh, stock and basically bury it in there into our um, into our nut. Now this saran is to help us so that we don't get the uh, tail or the, the live center epoxied into the stock. But we're just going to give this a little turn here and make sure that everything is nicely centered. And with that now, we're going to let that set up. So we'll put this um, wax paper back in here. We're going to let this epoxy set up and we're going to move away from this and uh, let's go cut our pipe. Well, for the drum of our sander, we're going to be using some four inch conduit. And um, I've decided that what I'm going to do is make the width of the conduit to be the same as my planer so that it has the same limitations. So we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of this off at 13 inches. Now you want to try to make that cut as squarely to the uh, pipe as you can because once you get those end wooden plugs in you really want it to hold together squarely on the lathe. And with that we have a 13 inch piece of 4 inch conduit uh, cut and uh, ready to play with sort of thing. But once you're happy with this and you're pretty sure it's a square on the end is what you can make it, um, head back to your blank because by now that epoxy should be set up and uh, I'll show you what to do next. Well here we are and yet another day has passed. Um, we got our pipe cut last night as well as the nut epoxied in and uh, you want to take the inside edge of that uh, pipe that you just cut and just give it a light filing around to get the burr out of it from uh, cutting it with the grinding wheel or whatever method you use to cut that pipe. But at this point in time we're going to go over to the lathe I'm going to take that glue up off of the headstock and I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and just knock the corners off of it. Once we get that done, we're going to put it back on the lathe and I'm going to spin the whole assembly to round. Well the blank is turned round and what we want to do is I want to put a mark in from each end. Um, I'm going to say about 3 eighths of an inch. That measurement's not imperative 
that will be basically the overhang outside the pipe. Uh, and I, I think maybe 3 8 should be a sufficient amount and the rest will be inside the pipe. So let's put a mark there at 3 8 of an inch. Well, you've got those marks at 3 8 of an inch in from either end of your blank. And now comes the time where you want to be careful. And what you need is an internal diameter me or measurement of this conduit. Now, this is a 4 inch conduit, which means that the internal diameter should be 4 inches. But Measure it, check it, double check it, make sure that everything is right and that you have that measurement because once you get it, you need to very accurately now turn the center of this blank, leaving your 3 8 of an inch thick shoulders, but turn the center of this blank down to whatever you determine this internal dimension to be. And in this case, it's going to be around four inches, but I'm going to measure and double check and turn this down uh, to whatever, well, whatever the, uh, the ruler says this is. So I've used my calipers to take an internal dimension or interior dimension of that conduit, and I've transferred that measurement onto my calipers. From here now, I'm going to use my parting tool, and I'm just going to drive in here at the uh, at the flange mark here, that 3 8 of an inch mark that we put in there earlier. And I'm just going to go in until this measurement is transferred to, um, to this assembly. And I've made it just a little bit bigger to give me some wiggle room in case I mess it up. And now that we have our initial grooves put in with the parting tool giving us our depth, we're going to go ahead and clear out this center material right here. Once you finish taking out this center part now, check your measurements again. Uh, I've checked these a few times. I'm pretty confident that I have them right. You won't get a second chance at this. So you want to lightly sand the inside of this and round off these corners. Don't go too crazy on the sanding because you don't want to take away your dimension. And once you get this uh, sand it to your liking, let's remove it from the lathe and take it over to the bench. Well, I have checked and checked and checked and I don't know how much more I can check it. But what I did do was instead of using the original calipers that I used over on the lathe, um, I got a different set out and just to make sure that I wasn't relying on a measurement from um, the first set, I measured again with a new set of calipers and I checked and I still get the same results. So, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm paranoid on this. Now it's come time to split these apart. If you remember, we had that craft paper in there and if all goes well, you should, hopefully, be able to just place a one inch chisel on the line where your brown craft paper is and give it a couple whacks and hopefully they'll separate. Just like that. That's swanky. And now you have your two ends for your drum. Now with that, we have our drum here. I've placed a piece of wood down on the bench just so that when I'm hammering on this, I'm not cutting into my bench. But you place one of your plugs in the end and with a rubber mallet, just seat it down into your pipe. Now this didn't go down all the way. Uh, we could probably hammer on it some more and really get it wedged in there and I may just do that but you don't want to misshape it um, and make it so that it's going in off center or carving its way in so just for a couple wraps 
get it placed in there and once you get your drum assembly together take it back over to the lathe. Well we've got it on the lathe, we've got it chucked up um, it spins nicely the end caps have a little bit of a wobble to them and I think that's just where they're not squarely seated into the conduit. I may make some adjustments to that with a little bit of sanding. Uh, I'm not sure, but if we place a wooden handle on there, what you're looking for is to make sure that your handle's not doing this. You don't want it bouncing uh, the same way it would when you get um, a uh, turning that's out of round. So if we place the handle on here, you can see there's no bouncing. So it looks like, as far as our sanding drum goes, this thing is turning true. And uh, now that this is kind of done without the sandpaper, I'm going to fine tune it, like I said, just a little bit. We'll drill some holes in the ends just to screw it all together once we're happy with all the adjustments. And I'm going to clean up this mess and we're going to start working on the table of the sander that will mount on the bed of the lathe. Well the process for making the table for this sander is definitely not a difficult process. Um, it's basically two pieces of three quarter inch MDF sandwiched together and hinged so that you can adjust the height of the top table. Um, this video is starting to get a little on the long side with the workings of the drum and whatnot, so I'm not going to go into super details on how to make the table, um, but I'm going to go ahead and make it and then I'll do a little segment showing you what it looks like, pointing out the features of it, and then we'll take the sander for a test run once I get the sandpaper placed on it. Again, for the sandpaper, um, if you don't know how to roll sandpaper onto a drum, uh, I'm not sure how to help you with that, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do all of that and come back and see you, explain it all, and then we're going to take it for a test drive. Well, I've got the drum wrapped with sandpaper. This is 100 grit. And uh, what I did here was spray the last tail ends of both sides with some spray adhesive and attach it to the drum and just to seal down the ends just to make sure that once that glue heats up, and it will, um, that it doesn't let go, I just sealed up the ends just with a little bit of electrical tape just on the edges there, just as an extra measure. Primitive? Yes. Does it work? Heck yeah. So now that you've seen the drum here with the sandpaper on it, let's go through all the components of the base and the table. And for that we're going to head over to the workbench. Well, this is it. This is our table. Uh, as I said, it's really nothing spectacular. It's two pieces of three-quarter inch MDF um, that have been cut to 13 inches uh, wide for the size of our drum and 18 and a half inches long. Um, from there on the bottom I've mounted this strip of maple and this is 13 inches or just shy of it uh, long and an inch and a quarter wide. Now this inch and a quarter measurement this coincides with the gap um, on the bed of our lathe that our tailstock normally runs in. Um, so <clears throat> that's the purpose of this. This strip will sit in that gap and keep our table square to the drum. I've drilled a 5 16 hole through the middle of that particular um, piece and you can see that with a router I've put a little recess, <clears throat> excuse me, a little recess in the middle of it. And what that recess is for is for this three inch T bolt. And that three inch T bolt will just drop right into that recess, just like that. And it sticks out through the bottom here. And what I have is a four by four inch square of plywood that will sit on here with a uh, plastic 
quarter 20 shop knob and that will hold it to the bed of the lathe. Once that's all mounted we need something for height adjustment and what I've done is I have epoxied in a half inch nut into our um, three-quarter MDF and I've made a little shop made knob out of three-quarter plywood I've epoxied in a half inch piece of threaded rod and then I have this extra half inch nut and a washer here and that's just to lock in any adjustment that we uh, we make and for this of course um, it just gets threaded in to the bottom of this uh, half inch nut uh, I know it's hard to see at the moment I just don't have enough hands to um, adjust both the camera and the piece but it gets screwed up inside this um, half inch nut just like that and the table as you adjust this upwards um, the table will rest on that half inch threaded rod and give you the ability by turning the rod in a little further or out to uh, provide yourself with the height adjustment varying the distance between your drum and the table and once you get that distance set if you wish and I would think with any vibrations you may want to wish you can tighten down this three quarter this half inch nut to the base here to lock in your setting so that's the table nothing spectacular uh, you guys are smart enough I'm sure that you could figure this out um, very easily and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the lathe now and we're gonna mount this well here we are at the lathe and we're just gonna take our base assembly and in a nutshell lay it on the table here so that that inch and a quarter wide strip sits firmly in the gap between your rails here and you can see how sturdy that is that's not shifting at all so now that we've got that in there we can insert our 4x4 block of plywood with our knob and tighten the assembly down and you can just see underneath here the lathe this is the uh, jig knob that will tighten down and sandwich the bed of our lathe between the MDF bed that we've made and the action and this uh, piece of 4x4 and that now is securely on there and it's not going to move anywhere and of course at the front of the lathe which in this case is the back of the jig we have our adjustment knob um, to raise and lower the height of our table to our drum so now that the table is mounted in place let's get the drum put back on the lathe well we've got the drum on we've got her set up and uh, I, I have it set to a thickness that I can start trying to plane the, or sand this piece of mahogany that gave us trouble in the uh, thickness planer I don't have any dust collection hooked up to it at the moment because to tell you the truth I don't know how much is required so I'm going to do a test run here and see where the most dust is kicked up and uh, once I can evaluate that I'll add dust collection to it um, for the next run but for now let's try it and uh, see how we make out once I get my dust mask on and here we go
And that would be all she wrote for this week's show. Definitely a success on the thickness sander, um, but definitely requires some dust collection. I made a few passes. Uh, I kind of assessed where the most dust comes from, and I'm hoping that by next week's show, um, when I go to thickness the new panels for the soundboard and the back of the ukulele, you guys are going to see some dust collection in place on this uh, particular unit. I uh, ran through those passes, did some uh, digital caliper testing, and it's nice and even across the board. Um, as it was taking down the thickness, it was doing it evenly, which is great. I'm very happy about that. Um, definitely a successful show, and if you guys are in the market for one of these thickness sanders, this thing is the way to go if you don't have the big bucks. Um, I made this for about $30. Uh, all, all, everything. So that's not bad. I can deal with a $30 thickness sander, but uh, dust collection a must. Guys, next week's show, we're going to re thickness those boards and we're going to get going on uh, making the bender mechanism for the sides of the ukulele as well as thicknessing uh, those particular pieces but uh, that's next week for now guys I want to thank you for tuning in and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video Well, you know I couldn't leave it without some kind of dust collection to end the week. And this was an old bracket that I had for dust collection years ago. And uh, essentially all I've done is taken a piece of ABS pipe. I've cut a one inch slot, actually it's more like three quarters, along the bottom edge facing the drum. This flap is just three layers of duct tape that I've uh, stuck together, sticky side to sticky side. And that just hangs down to prevent the dust from flying out the back. And uh, on the other end, it's connected to my shop vac. So the shop vac runs, it gives a light suction through this underside of the pipe. And it does a great job of keeping all that airborne dust out of the air. I'm actually very amazed. There is still quite a bit of dust on the actual table. Um, I'm not so sure with this type of sander application, having no experience with one, if that is something that can be eliminated or not. Uh, maybe if I pump up the CFMs through here by using uh, my 4 inch collection and bring it down to the 2 inch to increase the suction, that might help me out. But for now I'm quite happy with the amount of collection I'm getting for this and on that we're going to end this week's show. See you again next week.